Okay, and what actually are two spectral bands at multispectral images we are talking about? Uh, because the, the, this concept of, of a multispectral satellite images is uh, pretty difficult, but it is important to understand them. It is all about electromagnetic spectrum. Of course, you probably all know from school physics classes that uh, actually all visible light uh, and also a number of invisible radiation like infrared, ultraviolet light, and microwave radiation and radio waves and X-rays, all of these uh, types of radiation is actually have the same nature. It is electromagnetic radiation. And actually modern optical satellites, they could uh, not only record the intensity of visible light, but also the intensity of a uh, wide variety of infrared lights and sometimes even ultraviolet light. And what's important, that they do not record all this spectrum of different visible uh, light and infrared light, not, not all together, it, it records them, but they record it different type of lights separately, different type of this electromagnetic radiation, modern satellites could record separately. And we will somehow a little bit scale up. Uh, so just brief uh, explanation how actually the modern optical satellites work. Uh, actually the, the sunlight is going through the atmosphere of our planet and some of some part of that light is absorbed uh, is, is being absorbed. Uh, while going through atmosphere and another part is scattering, mainly, for example, um, of, uh, in the visible uh, part of the spectrum, mainly blue light is scattering uh, because of small of dust and other small article and aerosols present in the atmosphere. And this is actually the reason why we see our skies in blue color, because they are scattering uh, on that small dust and, and uh, aerosols in the atmosphere. But biggest part of the solar radiation actually reaches the uh, Earth's surface. And here, some of this uh, sunlight is reflected back into the sky and another, another part is being absorbed uh, by, by the different surfaces on our planet by vegetation, by artificial services, by background. And another, another part is reflected. And what is reflected is uh, detected by uh, the sensors of modern satellites. And if you will somehow look carefully at this uh, part of electromagnetic spectrum, including visible light and infrared light. This uh, picture I have taken from uh, NASA, NASA website. Uh, and all these peaks in gray uh, just uh, sh show, show us the uh, two parts of a spectrum, two parts of a light which go through uh, the atmosphere through Earth's atmosphere, because our atmosphere is not transparent for some, uh, for some light, for some, uh, some spectrum of uh, wavelengths. Uh, and of course, we, the satellites could only detect the light, which could go from the sun to the surface of the atmosphere, reflect and go, go back to, to the sky and could be catched and detected by satellite sensors. And so all these rectangles, they, they uh, present uh, actually the so-called spectral bands where uh, um, so the um, spectra, uh, spectrum of, of uh, electromagnetic waves detected by particular sensor. So you could see that, for example, this 
number is two, three, and four all together. Uh, they they are three sensor uh, which could detect it sensing the visible light. It's number two uh, could record separately the blue line and blue light. Uh, the band the, or sensor number three uh, could detect and record the green light separately from blue and red, and the sensor number four could record the red light separately from blue and green. So this is the main principle of spectral band. So we could uh, only record the uh, narrow diapason of the wavelengths separately from all the rest. So we could separately record blue line, green line, and red line. But for modern satellites also could record uh, some other invisible light. For example, this sensor number five, uh, so the fifth spectral band, how is it called, uh, could record the invisible uh, infrared light, which is close in the wavelengths to, to visible light, and so it is called near infrared light. So it is, um, it is near the visible, close to visible, not very far from visible, which is what does it mean near. It is infrared, but it is near to the visible infrared. And it is recorded separately. And also there's some kind of, I would say, medium infrared, it is usually called reference it as uh, short wave infrared light. And uh, you put basically two sensors recording them, number six and number seven. Uh, and uh, the very uh, record, uh, the intensity of light of uh, with a wavelengths uh, which are adjusted to this uh, peaks of transparency of a uh, atmosphere. And finally, uh, some some detectors in some sensors and one sat eight and nine could record also the very far infrared light, so called far from. It means far from visible light. Uh, you could see the number in in the uh, under the uh, under the X horizontal X, so you could see how how far it is from. Uh, in nanometers, how far it is from visible light. Actually, thermal infrared, it is even not, uh, it is not the sunlight reflecting from the surface. This is just uh, some electromagnetic radiation emitted by warm or hot surfaces and objects on the Earth's surface. So you could detect this thermal infrared light in, even in the night without any sun present. So you could record this day and night. All the rest you could record only in the day when the sunlight is uh, coming to the earth surface and reflecting back. And this is called thermal infrared tier. So this has two different ways. Also some, some other uh, new bands uh, available with, in, in Landsat. Eight and nine satellites, but we will not go deeply in that. Uh, at least this is a more or less basic classification of spectral bands. All this sensor, uh, it records uh, the radiation with certain, the light with a certain wavelength separately from all the rest. And this is why the results of recording is called spectral bands. So what is recorded by spectra number two, for example, uh, or four, uh, it is called the spectral band number two or number four. This is just a list of Alanza spectral bands. You could very easily find it in, in the internet, uh, just particularly this is from Wikipedia, but you could find it also in the NASA website or in many other uh, places. You, here you could, this is a number of sensor or a number of band and what kind of light uh, does it detect? And this is the uh, wavelength diapason. Diapason. So you could uh, learn this, but you do not need to remember. You could find this information virtually any time. But what is important about the spectral bands? Uh, actually, various objects of a 
surface of our planet reflect and absorb sunlight differently depending on their wavelengths. So for example, just vegetation, for example, you know, you see that all grass and trees, they are usually green. What does it mean? It means that vegetation reflects the green part of light better than it reflects the blue and red visible light. So you could see the grass is green because it reflects the green light. And uh, the biggest part of blue and red light is actually consumed by vegetation because the plants, they uh, use the energy of this blue and, and red light for photosynthesis. We could just say that the you know, plants, they eat blue and red lights and the green light, they, they do not eat, they just reflect it. Like, uh, but also, for example, water, it is, could be different. It could, uh, it usually the water absorb much more uh, different type of lights. And usually it is much darker than vegetation. Some bare grounds could vice versa, could reflect red light back and you could see bare ground and blue light back and you could see the bare ground and this magenta or violet or red colors. And also beautiful up areas could reflect it differently. So different type of uh, surfaces, different type of objects on the surface, uh, they do reflect different type of uh, different, uh, different light with different wavelengths separately, differently. And so you could study that. You actually, if you will measure how different, how intensive different uh, objects and different surfaces reflect different type of lights. You could make uh, graphs and so we'll draw the, the, the lines like that. For example, snow and ice, they usually reflect small less uh, or visible light. So you could see the snow ice white because it, it, uh, they reflect all the light we see back. But actually some, uh, some infrared light they do reflect not, not so well as visible light. The clouds in the sky, they usually reflect uh, everything back. So if uh, they're very cloudy weather, the modern satellites, uh, optical satellites cannot see the surface through the clouds. Uh, the vegetation, they, uh, you see it is usually more complex. Uh, vegetation, as I told, they reflects a green light, but also it reflects when near light. And uh, for example, fi fine infrared light it usually don't reflect as well. So you see some differences and also different uh, types of vegetation could reflect uh, differently near infrared light and short wave infrared light. Also the clean water and turbid water could uh, reflect differently. Uh, the different parts of the spectrum. So based on that, you could make the lines for your sensor, for your satellite. If, if for example, like uh, this is a um, uh, drawing for uh, Landsat 7, for, for the six bands with three visible light bands, blue, green, and red, and also near infrared and two short wave infrared. And uh, this is just taken from a scientific article of my colleagues who just uh, presented how, how do we separate the sat satellite images, different type of vegetation and other land color. You could see that, for example, uh, different type of vegetation and grass and pine and some deciduous vegetation uh, in the visible part of the spectrum, all this lines going together. But in the uh, infrared part of the spectrum, there's a big distance between that. And so it means that uh, you could separate these types of objects using this invisible light. This is in that in infrared light, uh, the differences in vegetation could, uh, could be seen better than invisible light. And uh, actually, 
you could also very easy, easily find, could find the information about for, for which purposes uh, particular spectral bands in, in Landsat and other satellites could be used for. You could use, uh, for example, for vegetation, uh, uh, for, for different biomass contexts. You could use band, band number five is named for red. If you would like to see the differences in, in uh, moisture, that's where band number six and seven are useful. If you would like to see also uh, the differences vegetation, but also visible light, some red, for example, is uh, important, uh, and so on. So for different purposes, for different objects, you could uh, use different bands. But uh, also it is quite often it is useful not to see, to study every band separately, but also to combine them. And one of the most popular way to combine, to study uh, the satellite images, just to combine three bands together into so-called multispectral images. Uh, what, what's actually this approach is about? You could just take three particular bands, you could color them into three separate colors, like red, green, and blue, and you know what this red, green, and blue colors were important uh, for our computers because this is three main colors um, which give us uh, all the variety of shades in our uh, display, in our monitors, in all the computer digital devices nowadays. Uh, the colors are mainly uh, produced by com combining and mix mixing with three basic colors, red, green, and blue. And so if you could uh, visualize uh, any three bands, it could be visible light or invisible light. Uh, if you will visualize them as a red, green, and blue shades, uh, then you will mix them together and you will see a wide, wide variety of colors in the so-called RGB color compos composite images. Uh, and uh, actually you could choose any three of these 11 Landsat spectral bands. So if you could choose uh, just visible colors like blue, you will, you will color blue, the green light you will color green and red light you will color red, you will get the natural color image as uh, we could see in, in Google Maps, usually in Google Earth. But if you would like to visualize as green, not the real green, but some invisible infrared, and as a red, you will also visualize not the real red, but some, for example, short wave infrared, and with the blue, you could visualize, for example, visible red or some another invisible, um, for example, thermal far infrared light. You have some with false color composite where colors in that image will be unusual, but very informative. Right? So for example, this uh, synthesis we have uh, seen in, uh, in many places, which is a very popular for, for studying vegetation. We could see it in Global Forest Change Portal, for example. Uh, the synthesis of bands four, five, and six uh, by Lancet eight and nine. And they are colored usually in the way that the band four, uh, the visible red light is colored as blue. Uh, band five, nay, infrared, invisible infrared, is colored as green. And uh, short wave infrared, or somehow medium, I would say, uh, infrared also invisible, is visualized as red. And as you compose them together, you will you will get this uh, uh, six, five, and four synthesis composite. And this is the, uh, our work in fact. Uh, Synthesis in lots of images, which is taken from this Global Forest Watch portal. And uh, as we already discussed uh, in some other presentation, you could actually study us using this site 
uh, in that false color synthesis, but you could see much uh, variations in the vegetation using wet. Uh, actually, different Landsat satellites they, uh, have been equipped with different set of sensors, very, very old Landsat, which are not operational anymore. Uh, they only have uh, visible light uh, sensors and just one infrared. Uh, where Landsat 5, uh, who operated, the, the, which has operate, had operated actually for about 20 years in orbit. It already uh, had uh, the thermal infrared and shortwave infrared sensors as well. And uh, modern Landsat 7, 8, and 9 operating right now, they are also equipped with all these sensors. And Landsat 8 and 9, they even have a few extra uh, sensor for, for studying some clouds, for studying shorelines, and some other specific thing. Uh, this is just uh, the name of the uh, sensors. And if you will see the strange abbreviation, you just have to understand it is just the name of the uh, cameras, I would say. This is not a real photo cameras, but a specific uh, electronic sensors uh, in the satellites, but this is the names of the uh, that instruments, which satellites I keep with. Uh, and actually, there are also some, some more satellites, they're just Landsat. Uh, there is also, for example, Sentinel 2 satellite is very popular. It does not have thermal infrared sensor, but it has a wide variety of other sensors. Uh, and also, some uh, you could see some. Uh, for example, uh, MODIS uh, sensor, MODIS uh, spectrometer, uh, the instrument uh, which uh, a few satellites are equipped with. And uh, this instrument is, uh, produces not very detailed images, but it has many, many spectral bands. So in, in the special resolution, as we, as we say it, uh, it is not very detailed, uh, but in terms of spectral resolution, it is a really high, uh, high highly sensitive to difference in, in, in uh, spectral reflections. So uh, that's, uh, I hope that was understandable. And uh, this is, somehow could help you to understand what is uh, what are spectral bands and what are multispectral images.